Hello and welcome to this episode of Chai with Lakshmi. I'm in a place that's buzzing with ideas and entrepreneurs. And I'm about to meet a serial entrepreneur, an angel investor, who's going to share fantastic insights on the right approach to being a technology startup in India today. In 50 Hours is a concept weekend designed to nourish new technology ideas. The founder, Vijay Anand, is a young serial entrepreneur and angel investor. Vijay also runs the Startup Center, a space that offers a residential program including funding and mentoring to tech and digital startups. I catch up with Vijay over chai and get him talking about his experience-based insights on entrepreneurship as well as on starting up in tech. Vijay, so tell me about your journey with entrepreneurship. Where did you start off and you know how has the journey been so far? I think as early as 16, I get into this whole um, momentum of building something, selling to people and things like that. But I think uh, the day, I think the, the age when I probably realized that I was an entrepreneur was probably when I was in my first year in, in college. Um, so built three companies since then, have been helping entrepreneurs um, since 2003 in India. Tell me about your three companies and then, you know, to elaborate a bit about how you've been helping entrepreneurs since 2003. I think people take steps to become an entrepreneur over a period of time. Uh, as my mentor once said, uh, I think people very much put the focus on the companies that they're building, but really, most of the time, you are the product that you're building, right? So as becoming an entrepreneur in a way is also a lifelong journey. Uh, so there's these phases in life where you build one company, you exit out of it, you go build another company, but all throughout, you're basically pushing yourself to what you are, right? Um, so I started my first company when I was 16, um, partly because I was sitting at home bored and building software for banks and making money out of it. Uh, I think the only reason we even registered that company was because we needed to get the check out of that. Uh, but I don't think there was any intentions beyond that. But I learned a lot about how to build a product, how to basically work with customers and things like that. Uh, I went to Canada for my undergrad, um, built a company there, or put together a company, I would say, uh, with my friends and things like that, because we just didn't want to take up a job with, with another company which was just giving us code maintenance work, and we wanted to do something on our own. Um, we didn't do anything significant there, but you know some of the products that we actually worked on basically gave us a lot of um, encouragement to say that you know we can go on to build something substantial. Uh, the third company that we put together was what basically made us money, uh, because we, the company that we put together sold to Nokia, we made some money, and things like that. Um, came back to India, not of choice, but accident, uh, for my brother's wedding, and then kind of decided to stay back. Uh, and have been working, I've, I've been working in IIT Madras for the last six years and then stepped out recently and started this thing called the Startup Center. So when you look at your own experience with entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and when you look at, let's say, you've been, you've been mentoring and um, you've also been investing as an angel investor since 2003, what would you say, you know, if, if you had one big observation about entrepreneurship and all these years that you've seen, what would be that one observation that you'd like to share? I think I think the fundamental thing that probably people misunderstand in entrepreneurship in India is that people are really trying to hit it out of the ball park in just the first shot itself, right? So people don't realize that value building is a step function, right? It's a skill set that you have to build over a period of time. Uh, but they want their first company to be a billion dollar company which will go IPO, uh, which simply doesn't happen because, you know, you either don't have the skill set or you're just over leveraging yourself. Um, and I think that's, that's the one thing that I would say, like entrepreneurship is pretty much a step function. Uh, somebody very recently said that your first company should never get funded because you'll never learn the ropes at all. Um, in the second company, you should probably build, take a little bit of money, build it from end to, you know, till the end, beginning till the end, and sell it off to somewhere. Make a little bit of money, not too much to get you comfortable, but a little bit of money so that you'll go build your third company where you'll really, really give, give back. Um, so I think it takes time, but people lack that patience. Everybody, just like an MBA school, basically wants entrepreneurship and a company and success in one shot, which doesn't happen that way. Now, to think of entrepreneurship as an experiment mm -hmm. uh, takes an attitude shift, mm -hmm. right? So if you're talking about an, uh, the right kind of attitude towards entrepreneurship, how would you define that? You know, what would you say that, that, that contains? A basic philosophy of evolution, really. Right? You have to throw multiple variations of interesting ideas out there and find a way to figure out something that you're really passionate about that you want to put the rest of your life behind. Even if it's not the rest of your life behind, at least five to seven years of your life. And that will seem like 
the whole of your life because you're working almost you know 18 out of the 24 hours that you have and the rest of the six hours you're not sleeping you're just like exhausted and just doze off uh, it doesn't happen as you know it, it, it is hard work I think people have to get it right uh, value building by two people um, and going out and changing trying to change the world is not something that happens by itself it makes takes a lot of effort um, so I think I think you have to constantly not fall in love with the idea but fall in love with the problem that you're trying to solve and that changes a lot of things completely right um, I see a lot of people getting getting very emotional about the idea because it's your brainchild obviously you'll have emotional attachments to it but if it's not working if the market says no and one way that the market says no is giving you zero revenues um, you have to figure out a way how to adapt because at the end of the day it's just a phase you're the product right you have to keep that in mind Tell me a bit about, you know, how In 50 Hours as a concept mm -hmm. and the Startup Center fits in with this understanding that you have of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs. So uh, In 50 Hours came about because uh, uh, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs who, and we hear about these very interesting companies that are doing really well across the globe. And the minute they hear news about, you know, some company, they'll basically say, you know what, I used to have an idea like that three years ago, and I did never nothing about it, right? Um, and really, if you basically ask him, why didn't you do anything about it? He's like, oh no, I was actually in a day job at that time. I couldn't really much about it kind of deal, right? So in 50 hours in a way is basically to kind of minimize that risk and basically get these guys out of the couch and saying that, you know what? You might not be able to quit your job and start something, but what about a weekend? Can you come out and, and build something and convert that idea into something as minimal as a prototype so that you don't have to go on explaining to people what your idea is? Right? You can show them the link, you know, a link to a prototype, a working thing, and saying that, hey, you know what, you see this, you see that, you know, this is how it works. And you'll be able to get a lot of feedback to kind of figure out whether this is something you want to do. It'll give you enough data to say that, you know what, can you justify going and quitting the job, rather than just on an idea. Right? And we've been doing this for the last uh, 18 months now. So um, we've done about six editions in Chennai, about one in Delhi, one in Bangalore, one in, Del in, in Pune as well. Um, it's been quite inspiring to see what people come up with. Now that's a lot of in 50 hour, you know, weekends that happen across the country and that's a lot of ideas coming your way to vet between you and the mentors and let's say the other investors who come in. How many of those ideas actually take off, go beyond the 50 hours? So we do have a simple selection process when people are pitching their ideas. Um, so there are three kinds of people who are coming to an event like this, right? There are so-called the idea smith, the person with the idea. There's a developer and then there's the designers, right? We do believe that all great consumer products actually have to have a designer to it, working on it. Otherwise, it's very hard. Uh, because people get very, very biased towards a, a, a site which is basically has blue and purple on it, right? Okay. So you have to get your basic etiquette so that people at least go beyond that. Um, so once that happens on the Friday evening, they basically come and pitch their ideas and they try to form teams. And that's the first way to figure out whether your idea has feet at all, right? Because if your idea doesn't excite anybody, you're not going to form teams. It's simple as that, right? Um, the second thing that we do is that we basically put all the ideas on a board and start voting against it. Everybody gets three votes, um, apart from me, because I'm not allowed to be prejudiced. So everybody puts three votes on the companies, and we basically allow for 75% of the ideas to go through. So if we have 100 ideas, we'll get 75 ideas to say, you know what, these are the selected ones, let's run. Everybody else, we ask, actually ask them to scramble and go join the teams. So in terms of pure statistics, we had about close to about 200 participants in the last how many hour, in 50 hours that we had, mm -hmm. about 100 plus prototypes that have come out of it, and close to about 25 odd startups that are coming out of it, right? When I say a startup, it means a product which actually has a customer, and there are two people who are willing to invest time and effort behind it. And I think that's, that's a significant number to start off with. If that is the success ratio then, um, and you know, clearly entrepreneurship is an experiment, what is the cost to that experiment at a person level? You know, given what you've seen, what would you say that, that price is? I think there are two aspects to this. Uh, in terms of absolute cost, it's the cost of basically stepping out of a comfort zone. Really, it comes down to that, right? So you don't have an excuse anymore to say that, you know what, starting up basically means that I need to do this, I need to do that, and all those things, right? You can just come up with an idea, do your market research, figure out what your target audience is, and basically come build a prototype within a weekend, right? And there's tons of support system out there today. Um, the number of bloggers who are writing about entrepreneurs, shows like this. So there, there are plenty of avenues to support entrepreneurs today. Um, the Probably the biggest other cost that is required is, is growing your second skill set, right? 
um, I think a lot of people are one skill set short of actually becoming great. Everybody is, is a tech, a tech person is like so proud of being a tech person. Uh, a business guy is so proud of being a business person. And an accountant doesn't want to learn anything apart from numbers, right? I think the minute you start learning one skill set apart from what you are really good at, um, you, you really, really go into a completely new realm of possibility, right? And that's the cost. So if you really want to start up, you can't say that, you know, hey, I'm a developer and that's all I want to do because you're going to have to deal with auditors, right? You're going to have to deal with legal systems and all these things that, that simply are not in comfort zone. Um, so I think the bottom line is that, right? Are you willing to put yourself outside of your comfort zone? If you do that, and if you're willing to pay the cost, I think entrepreneurship is wide open. Fantastic points there on, on what you need to have in terms of skill sets. But by cost, I actually meant financially. Okay. You know, what would, so if we're talking about, let's say, someone coming... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we are not, we're not, this is not a, from, a, from an event perspective, this is not a for-profit event, right? Uh, it probably costs us more to be traveling to all the cities, but I think we love being in the midst of entrepreneurs, working with all these guys, and also enabling the next wave of entrepreneurs that are coming up. Uh, for seven years I've been doing this, I'll probably be doing it for the next ten years. Uh, I probably need to retire after that. But um, in terms of absolute cost, uh, for typical per participant probably pays about roughly around 1500 I say roughly because the designers and the developers pay lower than that. Thank you. Great to have you on the show. And there you go, 1,500 and one weekend, and you'll know whether your tech idea is worth taking up to the next level. Join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe. And keep in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and Pinterest.